Brooke, who would buy these assets? Well, I don't think it necessarily has to be a sale because some of these are so big that I, there's not really a conceivable buyer for any of them. I mean, GE has, you know, one of the top market share holdings in most of its businesses. Um, so I think, you know, sort of what they're talking about is maybe looking at what they did with Synchrony Financial or Baker Hughes, where you have sort of a publicly traded separate entity in which GE is a more majority shareholder. This is also something that Siemens has done with a number of its businesses. So explain how that works. I mean, what does it say about GE if you take one of their big units and says it's better off on its own than being part of GE? Well, I sort of think some of them might be better off on their but own. why would that because, be? Because, you know, I think what they've always said is that, you know, these businesses, they share technology and they share resources and they're able to invest on a grander scale in some of these aspirational goals like GE Digital. You know, I think the problem with that is that you still just have such a diverse and big conglomerate that things get missed. I mean, there's no really plausible reason why the challenges in the power market should have been missed as severely as they were, or why this issue with GE Capital and the insurance business should have been underestimated to the degree that it was. And I think at that point you have to say, if we had you know, more focused businesses with management teams that were really only concerned with that specific unit, could they be more nimble? Could they be better at responding to some of these risks? So to personalize this a little bit, is this an indictment of Jack Welch's basic theory of putting the company together, or of Jeff Immelt not putting the right management teams in place to have the sort of attention that you describe? I think, you know, that is the eternal question. Is it, was it Jack or was it Jeff? And, you know, everybody has their own opinion. I think that obviously the structure did work under Welch, but he also put some things in place that maybe hamstrung Jeff when he took over and maybe it got too big and too out of control for somebody to inherit and carry on his vision. That said, I do think that, you know, when you look at Jeff Immelt's track record and some of the acquisitions that he did, significantly doubling down on markets that are now giving GE significant headaches, I think that goes back to him and, you know, did he move fast enough to maybe dismantle Jack Welch's empire? Did he hold on to it for too long? I think these are questions that investors need to be asking.